Okay, it's day 92 of this ginger germination experiment. And as you can see, having moved these to the shade and having the leaves hug against the walls it has had a pretty good effect. It's been very positive. These leaves look a lot greener. Um, there was a period of time where I had these in direct sun and they were all kind of yellowing and dying at the edges and you can still see evidence of that. So this plant here got a lot taller. Um, you know, a lot of this may have had to do with me watering from the top and getting the sand soaked, but I still don't see anything else coming out of sand. You know, it's just these six shoot systems. Um, this plant has had some growth as well. You know, so what I was referring to earlier is, um, you know, the leaf damage and kind of the sunburn. Um, or maybe it's just, you know, some kind of dry burning caused by this being a very dry environment, you know, only 40 something percent humidity most of the time compared to the jungles to which this plant is native. And you can see some more frayed edges here. So those are all signs that the plant was uh, starving for water, overexposed to heat, you know, the humidity was too low and there was just too much sunlight. They emphasize continuously online that this is a plant that loves shade. So after I water from the top, there's that patch that kind of turned white there. It doesn't really look like mold, but it could be some kind of salt precipitation. I'm not sure why mold would just be like that with no filaments. You know, maybe mold on sand just looks like that. So in any case, uh, the soil still seems kind of, you know, moist um, on all of this area. You know, it's dry over here. And, you know, if anything needed moisture at the top, uh, you know, shallow roots for these smaller plants or nascent buds underneath to kind of shoot up through the sand, you know, they've pretty much gotten the moisture they need. I can try watering a little more, especially in this region that's more exposed to the sun during the early morning and noon. And maybe that will help that place a little bit. So let's just check out the water tray. So you can still see water in the water tray. But I'm going to go ahead and top this off and water the top again. Not too worried about mold with this thing being outdoors and being exposed in the sun to a good degree during the day. But, you know, if that becomes a problem, I'll stop the watering from the top. But ginger just needs a lot of humidity and water. So it's the middle of summer and all of my plants need a lot of moisture. The days are long and it's not always easy to water this thing, but uh, this pot is small so it's easy to max out. Alright, so yeah, it's overflowing and that's all I need. You know, it'll soak into the soil very quickly. So this is a lot of water honestly. I wouldn't recommend doing this with any of my other plants but this pot is small and it keeps drying out and I believe there are still shoot systems that can develop beyond these six. I've seen a lot of positive developments in these ginger plants over the last two weeks so I'm going to continue what I was doing to get it to this point of recovery.